Hey everybody, it's Bust with Battles with Bust number 499, and today we're doing battle with Annie, Master Yi, Wildfire. And so, I must say, right at the beginning of the video, as you watch this, the 4.11 patch is probably out in the wild. Uh, there'll just be a matter of hours between this video being released and the 4.11 patch hitting, and so uh, if there's a new big dragon that you're expecting to see within this deck and it's not here, that's going to be why. But I, I feel like this is going to be a potentially very viable deck uh, in the upcoming Eternal format with the nerf to Cosmic Call, the nerf to Concurrent Timelines really hammering down on the more uh, top-end style of the format. And then also the release and the spoil uh, of the big Titanic units with essentially every faction getting a very expensive dragon uh, added into the mix as the format slows down and becomes more unit-based to give the wildfire an opportunity to uh, come to the forefront and then just blow up your opponent in a very non-interactive fashion. And so uh, this deck, you know, it had a lot of merit, a lot of power uh, two patches ago, right? At the beginning of the Fates Voyage onward, uh, this was really uh, catching on a little bit. It was quite good uh, at taking down non-interactive decks with the wildfire only costing one mana. If you're not familiar with the main idea and the core idea of this style of deck, uh, it's only got three spells in it, right? It has wildfire, the deck's namesake, Deep Meditation, which only draws spells, and Rejuvenating Breeze, which only draws spells. And so the idea that we're going to be doing here is we're going to try and get in some early game aggression. We're going to attack with our Annies and our Legion Saboteurs and our Stagehands and the like, chunk down our opponent's health total, and then we're going to finish off the game with Wildfire. And the key point with all of these uh, only draw spells kind of things is that we know that we're either going to draw a Wildfire or we're going to draw a spell that draws another spell. And so pretty much all of our late game mana uh, can be invested into the wildfires and trying to close out the game. Uh, but you do get some interesting aspects added to this deck as we move into the space of Eternal. Uh, Deep Meditation is the big one. Uh, very easy to have uh, two spells cast on the previous turn to be casting Deep Meditation for only three mana. Uh, much cheaper than actually activating off of the Rejuvenating Breezes. Uh, and then we do get access to the Scattered Pod. And while I don't intend to ever use that Enlightened ability, having this playability to draw a slow spell which is 100% of the time Wildfire, or draw a Burst spell, uh, which is guaranteed to be one of our other two card, card draw cards, we can get exactly what we need at exactly the right time. And so uh, while we're playing, you know, more density of card draw style of things, uh, we have more opportunity to churn through them as the game goes on, and we have less opportunity to have these no wildfire style of draws. Uh, the big addition I will say out here in the space of the turtle that we're going to be using is going to be the Serene Sky Singer. Uh, this does reduce the cost of the spells in your deck by half, and this mainly affects our card draw cards. It does affect the wildfires that are currently in your deck, but wildfire shuffles a copy of itself back in without that cost reduction. And so we'll have the few one mana wildfires still running around, but uh, this cheapness is mainly here to help us like pop off on turn eight to where we maybe have access to 11 mana. And then that will let us say play a rejuvenating breeze, a deep meditation and three or four wildfires all back to back. Uh, tying in that mana cheapness brings us over to our champion space. This deck has historically had a wide variety of champions in it. You would see Zed, who is extremely good in the mirror match. You would see Samira as a controlly style champion. You would see Riven uh, as a more burst-based champion that would give you some interactivity with the Reforged-based units. But here, I'm sliding back to that original in Master Yi. I think that uh, getting the cost reduction on some of these spells, especially now that we're in the space to where uh, we're playing the six five-cost spells as opposed to just Wildfire and Rejuvenating Breeze, uh, that the mana cost reduction with the Master Master Yi is actually going to be quite important out here today. And so that is it. That is the deck. That's what we're doing battle with today. But before the battles begin, you know what we got to do. We got to pay that pay to win price. And I knew there was going to be something like as I scrolled through all of the Noxus cards, I was like, these Noxus cards are 100% going to be premium. I was really surprised any of the Ionia cards were actually turned premium. I think that's mostly uh, because 
uh, as you get the, the like the prismatic chests and whatnot throughout the game, my collection is very limited at this point. <laughs> and so uh, the, the Ionian cards are what turns up quite a bit because I did look a few videos ago, we played Ionia. I counted across our past like 250 videos and I think we played an Ionia deck like four times. <laughs> <laughs> and so we are certainly not out here paying to win too often with these dumb dumbs. But uh, the reju Rejuvenating Breeze, ready to go, ready to be turned premium. I'm ready for battle. I hope you are too. Let's jump on in. All right. Do a little wildfire and very fun, very interactive. It's the burn deck everyone always wants to see. <laughs> <laughs> as you're as you're out here playing some games your opponents always just go man i wish you would just cast a bunch of spells that just dome me right to the face but uh, i'm curious to see if we're actually running into a mirror match here with annie samira ionia uh, that strikes me as what we're about to see and so this could turn out to be quite interesting i'm gonna hang on to our early game aggression uh cycle away some of that card draw and stuff and see if we can't just get uh, get down on board early and fast and hard Not quite the type of matchup we're looking to face, you know. Uh, if it's a mirror, it's a mirror, whatever. But uh, I ideally, as things go, we would be in a spot to where, you know, we're playing something a little bit slower. Give us a little bit of time to, uh, to, to get our combos on board. Now here, I don't suspect we're up against the Wildfire deck anymore. We could be. Uh, you know, it is Ionia Noxus. It's not something you run into a ton, but... Uh, Seeing the hand buff kind of card come down to the board, I don't think that's what we're going to see. I think this is going to be a more just kind of general aggro-y kind of thing. All right, and so with the, the Master Yi on board... Ooh, it is Wildfires. We can potentially cheapen up the deep meditation right it can be a little bit challenging to cast or i'm sorry to to get the flow when we don't have um uh our, our things like Le legion saboteur on the board but uh there's uh, there's some possibilities to still uh, play like wuju styles and such to get that up and running but as this stands i think it's okay to take it kind of slow we'll attack with our master yi here i'm gonna drop a wildfire uh, just to go ahead and get it out of our hand. And then we'll look into next turn to potentially dropping Arachnoid Sentries and dropping uh, the Wuju style along with the Meditate uh, to get our spells up and running and try and quell some of this aggression. And Skysinger is very interesting in this mirror match given that it can uh, pick up that life steal. Quite interested to see how this one goes. Right, and a demolitionist comes in. Let's see if we keep passing or if he's going to bring the thunder in here. Thunder being brought. I feel you. Probably should have just put all these stats on Master Yi, but whatever. <laughs> it's always, uh, always a way to, to talk around that poor decision. You know, you just go, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I think this, this Sky Singer is going to be quite important, though. We, we're definitely falling behind in terms of health. Gonna need to catch up a little bit. And so I, I definitely think we want to be playing Scattered Pod here. Are we just going to go for the wildfires with it? Probably not. I think we probably want to pick up the burst just to give us another opportunity to have heal. Uh, so where are you at? Draw a burst spell. Let's see if we pick up the, the faster speed one, the rejuvenating breeze. We did not. But that's okay, I think. Wildfire drops us to six. Like, we, we should have quite a few opportunities to, to draw some spells next turn. This Wildfire takes us to three. His next one will be for four mana, so it should be a lethal. Uh, if we don't gain any health. The, the only thing that kind of worries me in this space is uh, uh, like we don't have the mana to play the, the Sky Singer and play the Rejuvenating Breeze. 
and so we have the the opportunity to get taken down there but otherwise i think this is fine trying to think if we want to say wildfire now so one of our like give the the breeze the potential to be the reduced cost card mm. let's just hold back on that Well, the, the Blade Scout's currently a guaranteed two points of damage at this point, so we'll drop the stun on it. If we get the opportunity to cycle around and prevent some more damage, I will uh, stage hand the Saboteur just as a means to uh, keep the damage from coming in. Alright, so up to six we go. Now let's see if we can't uh, gain a little bit more off of the Sky Singer. Mm. Good, good chance we're just dead here. Got a four damage one here, and then we'll see the next one should be for five. But we'll see if we get to, to hit with the Sky Singer and then potentially, like if he had if he picked up more rejuvenating breezes and we get into the next turn with the uh, the cheapened up spells in our deck and the deep meditation, then we have a, a shot to gain uh, enough that way. But I would say there's like a, a ninety percent chance we're just dead here. Came out on us just a little bit too aggressive. He got in too much unit damage on us. Ripperoni, GG. On to the next one. A stumble still leads down the path of progress. Stumble still leads down the path of progress. Truer words have never been said. All right, next to battle. against Aatrox Kane. See if we can't fire off those wildfires before the big darkens come online. Reasonable enough start. Got Annie involved here. We can hang on to the stage hand. This is one of the just absolute most aggressive units that we can be dropping in these spaces. So uh, if we get a, a nice shutdown on turn three, just the, the potential for tons of damage to roll through. The, the thing with Aatrox Kane is it typically doesn't have a ton of units, right? You typically get one unit on board and then you put an equipment on it and then you might cast a spell on that unit it doesn't do a very good job uh, of really getting a wide board and so he did get to lead off with the forsaken bakai which gives a, a bit of a shutdown in that sense but uh, there's a, still a, a real chance he doesn't get uh, the second one down i'll trade if he attacks he can he has the free attack with the keeper but if the bakai comes in we'll but we'll throw the saboteur in literally as fast as possible. Timing is everything. So we'll see. Uh, I'm curious to see if he has the follow-up unit or if it was just supposed to be a uh, an equip onto the keeper of the box. Yeah, that keeper can be scary. You drop the the dark and. Uh, uh, the 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 darken bow whatever the whatever the quick attack one is called it starts to be a nasty unit now what's a, a little more interesting I was curious if we were gonna get to drop the second stage hand uh, it doesn't it doesn't look like it's the case here but get that aggression in next turn nothing wrong with that. And I'll go ahead and start playing the wildfires. If we got to to flip the Annie, that would be pretty cool. He's got that interactive spell. We're gonna have to do some work through this dum dum, I guess. 
I mean, he's not going to really want to block with Eamon, so maybe it's not going to be as bad as I thought. So who comes in with the scattered pod? Do we do we just want to hit on the... It's like we already have a Rejuvenating Breeze, so we can just continue in with the slow spells. We'll be hitting a random one with the, uh, with the River Shaper, so... Hmm. This was supposed to be going better. <laughs> okay. Getting the, the lifesteal unit off the board to start. It's like we're not really trying to deal 20 damage with the wildfire. That's what's uh, so concerning to me about this game. We're really trying to do uh, like nine, right? One, one, then one, then two is three, and then three is six, and then four is ten. So I guess I guess ten is the more appropriate amount that we're uh, we're, we're trying to pull off. So he's got cane in hand. Can't really do anything about that. I am quite interested in adding the serene uh, the serene sky singer down next turn. So let's do this. Let's just go ahead and add in the wildfire. I'm curious to see if he tries to, you know, make an equip onto the defector. I'm just worried about this shadow step in hand. And so if he, like, open attacks, then we have a chance to uh, to, to maybe get a shutdown on Kane. I think this is still fine. He hasn't struck yet. If you do not have a part to play, take one. Maybe we should have led with the stage hand so that it could block the ranger defector. I was just thinking, like, the thing I had in my head is it's so annoying when you stun a backline unit and then they're still able to play uh, challenge cards and attack with this uh, this challenged cane, or this stunned cane. So, probably should have just gone ahead and done it so that we could get the stage hand block in front of the, uh, in front of the defector, but... You know what they classically say. It is what it is. All right, we can add in the Sky Singer. It's a touch awkward having these Spirit of the Wujus actually with flow, uh, but I, I think that we'll be able to uh, make use of them on the next turn, or two turns from now, I should say. We're going to Rejuvenating Breeze next turn, draw some cheapened spells, and then from the cheapened spells, we should be able to have flow for next turn. So how bad is this if he has a plus two attack thing? Let's just take the damage here. Deep meditation, deep meditation. Breeze and wildfire. Okay, we're getting there. I don't think we're dead here. He's got 11 on board, and we have the, the Rejuvenating Breeze in hand to gain a bit of health. He does have a ton of mana, though. I seek a weapon worthy of Naga so we'll see. He's going to have the, the Cane Hook on the Sky Singer to the right. We're looking at 6, 10, 12, 13, 14 now. This is not, not the way this attack should go. All right, so that will drop us to two, as long as he doesn't have another combat trick. But that makes sense, right? If you hook the uh, the Sky Singer way down to the right, then you get the uh, all of that combat damage in before we get the heal. All right, though, four damage wildfire. Takes him to 15. We need to we need to churn off three wildfires next turn. I don't think we have it in us. I don't think we have the mana. Uh, since, again, those ones that we shuffle in go back up to two mana. And so I, I think this one's probably done. Okay. Is that, is that lethal? Sure is. Sure thing. All right. GG. Well played on to the next one where are all these titanic decks we want to play against right where <laughs> where are the people play in the demacia boats and the giant dragons and stuff ah 
we're on the wrong patch. But again, that was tough. As you could see, like right there at the end, uh, we, we had a lot of wildfire damage in, but I think he gained nine off of the cultist. He got uh, two combat strikes in. It's like he got an unblocked attack in, a strike spell in, and then a trade in, so he got to gain nine off of it. It's quite a bit to overcome. So. All right, opponent says, I got to get my final day of Cosmic Call in. I got to have <laughs> one day of Cosmic Call generating the big spells. I got to do it. Want to play my living legends. All right, but a nice Noxus curve with this one. Let's see if he's going to start dropping little Stellacorns and stuff, getting some 1-4s on the board to be annoying. Guess not. You just you would snap it off as fast as you can. Oh, he does have it. It's a big decision right there, you know. <laughs> Do I play the absolute best card in this situation? I better stop and think about it. I better stop. All right. Get that nice six damage nugget in. Start to threaten with the river shaper. I'm on board. Rivers shape the land and give it life. Truer words have never been said. All right, so let's see how this turn goes. It would be very nice to have a second flow card, right? We've got the the stage hand to hit the first flow, but we want uh, or the the first skill ability, whatever. Wildfire was a good draw, so that we have the second. Now we could play the the spirit of the Wuju on the flow next turn. Get in there, combatants. Nice seven damage nug right to the face. All right. Give me them card draws. I'll take all the card draws, please. Here we go. Come and feel the flow. Do you all sing your naughty by nature whenever you play the flow cards? I don't. <laughs> I, don't uh, I don't play too much Ionia, but uh, I figure it's probably an appropriate thing to do. How many of you all know who Naughty by Nature is? They would have. Uh, they would have started being a thing in the nineties. <laughs> say, say, old old man bust dropping the dropping the musics on me. I bet he's down with OPP. Yeah, you know me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, though. Our bird's taken down. You want to start casting these wildfires. It's pretty close. We'll get to draw a guaranteed draw on a wildfire this turn with the scattered pod. Still get a, a, a unit draw off of the uh, the river shaper. Is this where we want to go? I think this is fine. Currently have seven damage of wildfire in hand. I think as long as we just don't die on this next turn, we'll be okay. And him not playing Cosmic Call here uh, really helps to that effect. Your wickedness shall not prosper. Like we can always come in and play the Witness next turn if we need to stun something. We're not going to be flowed, though, and so it's a, it's a bit of a bummer. 
But yeah, without like the, the Jace flip cosmic call this turn, I'm not ultra worried. I mean, uh, any any cosmic call has like the potential to just be a problem here, but uh, without having it last turn, I think we're pretty okay now. It's like he can he can't play his living legends, right? He can go into this next turn and then play a bunch of living le or play a bunch of stuff off of living legends and have the full board of uh, celestials or whatnot, but can't actually attack with them or anything. So do we want to wildfire here? It's like we we end up losing out on a point of mana doing it this way. All right, we're going to do it. Hopefully it's okay. There's the breeze. There's the wildfire. See if we can't market a W for Team Bust. Probably not. You never know about these dumb decks, right? They're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna drop a, a guiding light or drop a star shaping or something. You never know. Apparently, it was enough. GG. Well played. On to the next one. Again, another game. No Titanic units. Oof. Oof. Okay. On to the next one. Got one victory. I was worried. I, I thought we were going to go through this whole thing without winning a game, but... We, we we got one courtesy of our previous opponents, so that's in the mix. All right, up against Vladimir Brom. I have not played against the Scar Grounds so many times uh, <laughs> since I since I've been having to jump into the Eternal Cues to to make these videos. I, it feels like you play against the Scar Grounds like twenty percent of the time. I have no idea why people love this deck so much, but. It's a popular one. People really people really dig what's happening in this thing. It's the way I've been getting my uh, my, my practice games in for the champion draft series. It's like that's the only the only way to come out and really get into the eternal cues and uh, just just jumping in with that. It, it felt pretty good this week as we were uh, preparing to play against Mage and Bay and planning to play against Rise and have a lot of landmark destruction. Uh, taking the landmark destruction up against the the uh, the Brom decks was kind of nice. It, it didn't feel as good as I thought it was going to, uh, because it's it's just like such a bad matchup for everything that I already do anyways. But it, it was kind of nice to to have a couple angles of attack. And oh, that is a monstrous draw for the second stage hand. Like the the way that this was going to be a problem is we get all these units on board, and then he still gets to play Brom, and you know, Braum can prevent four and, and not die and then still get to really build up board. But the, the second stage hand is a monster. Now we're just going to blast him for like 18 damage. How much is this? Like 13? That's close to 18. Oh, 17. My, my math, my math failed me. <laughs> big, big surprise. But we got to be in pretty good shape here, right? It takes this deck like an hour and a half to ramp up. And so uh, we should be able to get our uh, get our spells online, right? The, the Scar Grounds just doesn't do anything. Play our Spirit of the Wuju. We'll play our Deep Meditation. Just need a, a handful of Wildfires to finish this thing off. the first one. 
We got an attack here. Just getting in three points of damage with one of these units will end the game with a wildfire. Uh, he's got a fresh dude. Okay. Well, I don't think we're really excited about attacking here. His units are just going to grow. We can still, you know, block. <laughs> there's, there, there's nothing wrong with the game plan of still just block. And so let's add in the scattered pod, pick up the slow spell, um, and then we can try and pop off after this turn. I mean, maybe not. I guess if he spends all of his mana here, there's a touch of incentive to maybe attack. Like, if he plays a Scar Mother Verna, I don't know. That doesn't that doesn't strike me as being very good. Opponent agrees that's too much. GG. Let's get into that final battle, the game five. Let's see what we can do. Okay. Two victories, two Ws marked down for Bust. Now up against Anivia. I feel like this has to be okay. If they're gonna gonna take an hour to, to come around and get Anivia's on board and play Rekindlers and stuff, I feel like we ought to be able to end the game before that. This isn't like uh, like that previous opponent that had the, the lifesteal unit. Like they're gonna have Vile Feasts and they're gonna have uh, maybe even something like Catalyst of the Aeons, but I don't think they'll have uh, a ton of heal. Interesting. No removal, no calling strikes, no quietus. Annie's just out here ready to party. Oh, this is going to be a, an immediate soul cleave, huh? That's how you ramp up big. Sure. Much better for us than soul cleave. I'm curious if we want to actually just get one of these units on the board. Yeah. Like, we're not going to be able to flow this turn. Right, maybe we just deep meditation. Ooh, that's nice. It's a big expensive spell rolling through. Right, so it's like we're not gonna flow next turn. We don't. We just don't have any way to do it. We're gonna be overbanking three mana. That's just way too much. Let's, let's play the meditation. Oh, we did flow. Oh, I forgot about the the Annie the Annie attack. Okay. Pretty cool. Now we get to come in and drop the thunder, right? We'll stop here. This gives us the flow with the first wildfire. Now we can look at this next turn as being able to arachnoid sentry the Anivia. Maybe get an attack. Probably won't, but we might get an attack in uh, on this turn. And then uh, we can continue on with the spells. Maybe he'll just play the rekindler or something, right? Wow, wow, okay. Gotta like that. 13 coming into 15. It's gotta have like a harsh winds or a vengeance or something, but if he just, just actual nothings here, we do have the wildfire to finish off the game. Eight. Get him to six. I wonder how mad you get when you're trying to get your Anivia into combat, just try and kill some stuff, you know? <laughs> have, have your own Anivia die so that you can play your Rekindlers and then it just gets stunned over and over again. Hmm. 
So is that supposed to be like a soul cleave? I, I think this is a, a safe pass. Like we're gonna just slam for a bunch of damage here. Like in, any non-zero amount of damage off of this is exceptionally good. And then we picked up one wildfire. We can still breeze. Like I, I think this is gonna be the, the game ender. Zenivia flip into harsh winds. Is that the right one? Sure. We've only got two mana left. Shouldn't have to worry about any heals. Our, we've drawn a lot of our card draw stuff at this point, so we've got a, a pretty reasonable chance of just picking up uh, the additional wildfire off of this breeze. There it is. Boom. All right, all right. Took it down to a winning record at the end of the day. Good job, us. Well done. We can pick this up and talk about it a little bit more. And so, you know, I think it's an interesting deck for the upcoming format. Uh, again, it's like, it's not good against aggro. It's okay against mid rangey stuff. It really just wants to play against like non-interactive things and get the spell thing happening and then killing off your opponent that way. Actually, it's a very nice comparison. If you if you watched our uh, our champion draft video, champion draft series video this week against Mage and Bay and a lot of the strategies that we put together uh, to take up against Rise and Cosmic Call is to where. Rise and Cosmic Call don't really do a lot of attacking. They just do this thing that basically says um, you're free to do the most powerful thing that you want to do, and I'm not really going to do too much to stop it, right? And so we're looking to attack that with engine decks in the draft series to where we're playing a bunch of unit boosting cards like Poppy. Um, and that same kind of thing applies to decks like this, to where if your opponent's just going to sit around and dirtle and fuck around until like turn eight and then do something really powerful in the late game, uh, then you have a great opportunity to just take them down because there is almost no interacting with the wildfire engine. And so, you know, it's very interesting in that sense. It's very interesting if your opponent's trying to play the new Titanic cards, but uh, you know, against something like pirates, your your win rate's pretty terrible. And so at the end of the day, it's ultimately a a pretty polarized deck. But uh, I always say I think it's very important to keep in mind these cards as uh, the formats change and new cards roll around, knowing that you have access to things like Scattered Pod that can draw just very specific cards, Deep Meditation being in that space of Eternal where it's not in Standard, and then things like Serene Sky Singer that can come in and cheapen up all the cards and allow, allow for uh, kind of combo-esque turns at the end of the game. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot different of a package that you have access to in Eternal that you don't necessarily have uh, in Standard. But nonetheless, good set of games. I had fun with that. I hope you did too, because that is going to do it for us today. So I hope everyone enjoyed the video. hope we maybe learned a thing or two along the way, and you had a good time watching. This is Bust, and we thank you for being here.